On the line with us is Dr. Paul Christofferson, uh, MSC, PhD, University Senior Lecturer and Glaciologist with the Scott Polar Research Institute at the University of Cambridge. Uh, we, there's a link to the website over at TomHartman.com, but it is uh, spri.cam.ac.uk. And uh, Dr. Christofferson, welcome to the program. Thank you, Tom. Thank you for the invitation. Thank you for being with us. I understand that um, the the Greenland ice. I mean, we. I think most people are familiar with the fact that the Arctic is losing ice like nobody's business. But Greenland uh, apparently is far more complex than we thought. That's right. Yes, we've we've um, carried out a new study uh, of the Greenland ice sheet, the land ice uh, that's situated and, and rimmed around mountains in Greenland and we've studied the ice both with observations and we're using these new observations to drive a new three-dimensional model of the flow of the ice itself. So the flow is the shearing of the ice that sort of makes sure that, that, that the snowfall that falls in the interior is transported to the coast and that looks to be more sensitive than we thought in the past. Yeah, and uh, for, just, just to set this up for people who don't know why this is of consequence, when ice melts in the Arctic, it, it, the, the, the biggest consequence of it, arguably, is that the, the uh, reflectivity of the Arctic has changed from being bright white to dark blue, and so it speeds up global warming. But when ice on land melts, it runs into the oceans off land and raises the sea level. Do I have that right? That's right. There is, um, there's, there's two sources uh, for sea level rise that we can really pin to the Greenland ice sheet. And, and the Greenland ice sheet is, is, is very large. We're talking um, 3 million cubic kilometers of solid ice over an area of 1.7 million square kilometers. So that's many American states put together. I made a little cal- calculation before, and I think it's it's sort of on the, in, in the vicinity of taking Washington State, Oregon, California, and Texas together. So that's, wow. that's the size of, of Greenland. Um, so, so what's pretty clear is, is that as climate warms, and it is warming, there's unrefutable evidence for that now, the Greenland ice sheet is melting faster. So we've had record extent of melt on the ice sheet. So that's simply the melt that takes place to come from with, with flow of water along the surface. And that's increasing year after year. What's less certain is how that melt is influencing the flow of this immense piece of ice. And that's what we think is more sensitive. So we've, we've discovered that the presence of a really soft ground beneath this ice sheet is, is making it more vulnerable to climate change than we thought in the past. In other words, Greenland is not just a, a pile of rocks. It's, it's, there's actually dirt down there and that reacts differently to the ice above it? Yeah, that's right. The, 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 there, is, there is weak dirt uh, underneath the ice sheet that, that absorbs the melt water that comes from the surface. And it's pretty clear that that's very large quantities of melt water. The, the water on the surface accumulates in these lakes on the surface that we call superglacial lakes. And we've been studying these lakes for a while. And they tend to almost all of them drain, suddenly disappear into the ice, and all that water gushes down to the underside of the ice where it flows into and, and makes this soup of mud and grit and dirt. And that, that muddy environment is, is struggling to absorb all the water that, that's, that's, that's coming down there from the lakes itself, and, and that's where the sensitivity lies. So you have uh, sort of a supersaturated mud solution under high pressure behaving like some kind of plasma? Is that- That's right, yeah, yeah. I, I, I mean, this is common. We, we've known that for a while in other places in Antarctica. It's, it's quite common because we've drilled down to the bottom of the Antarctic ice sheet, but there's not much evidence from Greenland so far. And we're finding similar muddy, weak environments. So, so it's, the ice is flowing in many places a bit like a hovercraft over these weak, weak, soft, this very weak, soft ground. So what does that mean for people living in, for example, Washington, D.C., or New York City, or Boston, or Miami? What, what does that mean in terms of, you know, my lifetime, my children's lifetime? Yeah, that's, that's a very good question. The green and ice sheet is melting on the surface, and we know that. We can see it. We can measure it from satellites. But fact is that 
that process in itself is actually there's a limit to how fast you can you can melt ice on the surface. What we don't know so much about is how fast we can make this ice flow. This is the joker in the game. Um, so and we've discovered that there's links and there's connections between the quantity of, of, of water on the surface and the speed at which the ice travels and is transported from the interior of the ice sheet out to the coast and ultimately as either water or icebergs into the sea. So this sort of what we call the dynamic contribution to sea level rise is very uncertain. And, and it's been speculated in the last few years that that contribution might not be as important as we once thought. But our study of this weak soft ground is, is a different story. It's one that tells that that, that, that flow might actually in the, fu in the future, when that soft ground is struggling to absorb and accommodate the water that flows into it, it will cause the ice to flow faster and it will transfer more water and more ice into the global ocean. And that could cause sea level rise at much higher rates than what we're experiencing today. Hmm. And, and within what kind of time frame? Well, that's, of course, difficult to, 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 to predict uh, with models. I, I mean, our, the model that we developed here, we are running it with very good observational data sets. So it's observational data sets for this weak, soft ground. We've got observational evidence of the quantity of water on the surface. We now need to run this model with future climate scenarios. So this is a task that's yet to be done to make an actual quantitative prediction. Mm -hmm. But there's a study that came out uh, together with ours, and it's showing how fast ice rose in the past. And that's a study that points that in the past, when we had ice sheets of the same size at, as today, sea level rise could rise by 1.5 to 2 meters per century. So that's a lot, that's yeah. a much faster rate of sea level rise than what's predicted uh, with current models. And one reason is that current models are actually not capable of incorporating this dynamic effect, so the, the effect that we can associate with the flow of the ice. So what would you say to uh, politicians and um, hustlers here in the United States who suggest that uh, there's no scientific consensus on climate change, we can't pin this on the fossil fuel industry, just leave those, na those nice Koch brothers alone and let them make their money, uh, that kind of thing? Yeah, I mean, th th that there is no consensus is just simply not true anymore. That, that's, that's just something that lobbyists or people with an agenda are saying. It, it's, there is a very good consensus amongst uh, scientists, people uh, like me who spend that every hour of, of, of their working life trying to figure out what's going on. And, it's, and there's no studies that are that are bucking the trend. There might be one glacier in one region that's showing an anomalous trend, and that's, of course, important to be aware of. But the, the glaciers that are bucking the trend is less than one out of 100. We're mm. seeing the Alps diminishing at a rapid speed here in Europe. I've talked to people up in Greenland, local hunters that are struggling to, to, to hunt under their traditions because the time at which they have the sea ice, the frozen ice on, on, on the surface of the fjords is, is very short now. Yeah. Um, people who live in the Arctic environment are not questioning climate change. So, uh, so, and people who read scientific papers and they're not questioning climate change either. So, to the viewers out there, there is there is no debate in the scientific community. Debate is political. Yeah, well said, uh, Dr. Paul Christofferson, University Senior Lecturer and Glaciologist at the Scott Polar Research Institute, the University of Cambridge. Sir, thanks so much for dropping by today. Thank you, Tom. Very nice speaking to you. Uh, and uh, very much appreciate your, your perspective. And